Hey, what's going on people? I hope you guys are doing good. Today, we're taking a look at another robotic vacuum. This is the DreamBot L10 Pro, and it's from DreamTech. It's similar to a previous vacuum that I reviewed or talked about in the sense that it has a lot of the same features, but this one comes with a dustbin that can last you up to two months, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and take a look at what comes inside the box, get this thing set up, do a quick overview, and uh, see what it's all about. This is gonna be a two-part video. This is gonna be like the overview and setup, and then the second video is gonna be my overall experience. Let's go ahead and get this thing out of the box and see what all is packaged inside. We have a quick start guide and instruction booklet on how to get everything set up and running. Then we have the mop attachment, which we'll set up and test out later on in the video. Then we have one side sweep brush. Then of course we have the vacuum itself. So this is the DreamBot L10 Pro right here. I like the gray, it's like a gunmetal gray. Of course, we have a power cable in order to charge the vacuum whenever it's docked. Everything is really well packaged. That's one thing I have to give DreamTech. Then we have the self-emptying bin and the charging base. So it's like a two-in-one. Get this thing out. And again, I really like the color. Like the gunmetal gray looks really, really nice. Last but not least, there are two dustbin bags. One comes pre-installed inside of the self-emptying canister, while the other was inside the box itself. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to remove these little foam inserts right here. So we're just gonna pop them out. And then we're gonna flip the L10 Pro over and install the little side brush here, like so. Now we need to set up the base. Obviously we need to take the power cord and then plug it into the base like so. And then there's this little area right here on the back of the base for cable management. So we can wrap the cable up in order to remove some of the slack to prevent any excess cable from showing just to keep things nice and tidy. So now I'll just take the vacuum and I'll go ahead and place it on the dock so that way it can charge itself while we finish up the remaining parts of the setup. Exactly. In order to finish up the setup process, we need to scan this QR code right here. So let's go ahead and open up the camera app scan the QR code, and then launch the Xiaomi Mi Home Mi app. So we'll go ahead and press and hold the spot clean and home buttons. We should hear waiting for network configuration. Waiting for the network configuration. So once that's been done, we can tap on operation confirmed, hit next, select the Wi-Fi network that you're going to be joining, as well as inputting the password for that Wi-Fi network, as you can see here, hit next, and now it's connecting the DreamBot L10 Pro to my Wi-Fi network. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the Wi-Fi settings and connect to the Dream Vacuum. And then I'll go back to the Mi Home app. Robot and phone connected. And you can see it's connecting. Home app to wait for the results. It's connecting everything right now. It's a very talkative vacuum, I must say. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and assign the room that the vacuum is in which is my living room, then tap next. And of course you can rename the vacuum to whatever you want. I renamed mine Lucille Ball. Once you have the name that you want, just tap next. And now we can get started on some of the features and what you can do inside of the app. So the first thing I noticed once I connected the vacuum to the app is that there's a new firmware update available. So I'm gonna go ahead and confirm the update and then start the update. While this is updating, I'm gonna give you a brief rundown of what this vacuum can do in terms of its specs. It is a very talkative vacuum. It has a suction power of 4,000 PA, a battery capacity of 5,200 milliamp hours, the dustbin capacity is 400 milliliters, and the water tank capacity of the mop attachment is 150 milliliters. Battery life is around 150 minutes, but we'll be talking about that more in the second video. It does feature the new and improved LiDAR scanner that they started implementing on their later generation devices. It has 3D obstacle avoidance sensors. The self-emptying bin base station is rated for 800 watts total. And the dust bag duration period is 65 days, as I previously stated. And that is a four liter dust bag. And it's 599 bucks if you want this combo. Looking at the vacuum itself, we have our buttons up here, which are the spot clean button, the power button, and then the home button. And then of course we have our LiDAR navigation right here. 
If you want to maintenance the vacuum itself, you can pop open the back end. And from here, you can take out the dustbin and then you can empty the dustbin manually if you don't want to use the uh, larger dustbin or the auto emptying feature. And then you would clean the filter using the included brush, which is right here inside the vacuum. And then you use this brush not just to clean the filter, but also to clean the different sensors on the vacuum. So you would just pop out that brush and then you can clean the areas under here, such as this brush, which also pops out just by squeezing these two pieces together. And then now the brush can come out and you can clean it. And if you want to use the mop attachment, you just take the mop attachment and then it just snaps on magnetically like so. Water tank has been installed. And then it lets you know that it's been installed. Like I said, very talkative vacuum. And when you're ready to take off the mop attachment to clean it, you just press these two buttons and then slide it off like so. Water tank has been removed. And it even lets you know when it's been removed. And then this pad right here comes off with the Velcro and then you can just slide it off like so to clean it, just like that. And the instructions to use the mop attachment are right here. It tells you what you need to do. Most important thing is not to use detergents or disinfectants. This is for water only. Maintenance on the bin itself is really easy. All you have to do is just change out the dustbin bag. So you open up the top there's a little handle here and you just pull out the bag and then you put in your new bag. You line everything up when you're replacing the bag, slide it in, and then you make sure that this little handle right here is pushed down and that's it. Close it and you're ready to go. Inside the app, this is the layout that you'll be greeted with, except you'll have the layout to your home or floor plan right here in the center. We have the cleaning area, whatever it's going to be cleaning, how long it's going to take, and then you have your battery level right there. You have your no-go zones, which we'll talk about here in a minute, and then you have your various cleaning modes ranging from quiet, standard, strong, and turbo, and then your water flow settings for the mop function, which are low, medium, and high. And then at the bottom, we can select various rooms. We can clean all of the floor plan, and then you can do different zones. You have map management. You can press the play button, which is going to automatically start cleaning. And then you have the status of the vacuum right here, which right now it says charging, but once it's charged to 100%, this will change to charged. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch map management, and then I'm going to create a new map, and then I'm gonna do fast mapping, so that way the vacuum can go ahead and map out my entire downstairs floor plan. As you can see, it's completely finished mapping my downstairs area. We have three areas. We have A, B, and C. B is my living room area, as well as my back door entryway. And then we have C, which is my dining room, my kitchen, my front door entry area, and my game room. And then A is my front door closet, as well as my bathroom. We need to break these up a little bit and create some more rooms, especially with C. So I'm gonna go into map management. And from here, I can rename my map. So right now it's called map one. I'm gonna tap on map one, and I'm gonna rename this to downstairs. And then hit confirm, let that save. Now I'm gonna go into the map, and I'm gonna split up C. So I'm gonna tap on C, I'm gonna tap split, and I'm gonna take this line, and I'm going to split this area right here in order to create my dining room. Once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna tap the check mark, and you can see it saved my dining room area. Now I can tap on C and then tap rename. And you can see it gives me a bunch of names down here to choose from. And if you make a mistake and you want to merge two areas together again, all you have to do is tap merge and then select the areas that you want to merge and then hit the check mark and it will merge them into one confined area again. If I back out of my downstairs map, and go back to the main map management page, you can see we have the option to enable multi-floor maps. So if you have a multi-story home, you can have a downstairs map and an upstairs map. All you have to do is toggle that on and then create another map by tapping the plus symbol. You can save up to three different maps and then switch between these maps depending on where your vacuum is currently being docked. Tapping on the three little dots in the top right hand corner, and then going under device settings gives you a plethora of options that control the vacuum. So we can sync the time zone and time from our phone to the vacuum just by tapping on sync now. 
And then underneath that, we have 3D high precision obstacle avoidance. If you turn this off, you will save a little bit of battery, but I suggest just leaving it on since this is how the vacuum is going to detect things that might be on your floor, like a shoe, ball, things like that. We're gonna do a quick demo of that later on in the video. Carpet Boost will automatically recognize carpet and when the vacuum passes onto carpet, it will increase the suction power. I'm gonna go ahead and toggle that on. And then for identification sensitivity, I'm going to select medium, but as you can see, there is low, medium, and high. So make sure you pick the one that is appropriate for your house. And then we have child lock. If you turn this on, it's going to lock the buttons on the vacuum itself. So if you have small children and they happen to press these buttons, nothing is going to happen. And then we have resume cleaning mode. If this is turned on and the battery on the robot gets too low, it's going to dock itself to charge and then once it's fully charged, it will undock itself and pick up from where it left off. If I back up to the main settings page here and get out of device settings, we have quite a few other settings to look at. We have the auto empty settings. If I tap on that and then enable it, I can have it auto empty after one cleaning task, two cleaning tasks or three cleaning tasks. And then if we back up, we have scheduled cleanup. So if you tap on that, you can create a schedule for the vacuum to automatically run. Now, if I back up out of scheduled settings, we have cleaning history. This will give you the history of all the cleanings that it has performed. If I back up out of that, we have accessory usage. This is gonna let you know whether or not you need to clean the different components of the vacuum. We'll back up. And then we have remote control, which I'm gonna show you how to use once we get to the usability and the overall functionality of the vacuum. And then we have locate my robot, which is really funny. So if the robot ends up getting stuck or you just can't locate it, you can tap on that. I am here. And it will let you know where exactly it's at by saying I am here. Looking at the main page here, there's a couple more things I wanna to touch on. The first are zones. So if I tap on zone, I can create a little area for the vacuum to focus on, which is great for spot cleanups. And I can have it go over this area one or two times. Now. I can also schedule no-go zones by tapping on no-go zone right here. And then you have a no mop zone, which is gonna be exclusive for mopping. So if you have an area rug or an area with carpet, you can put the no mop zone over that area and it won't go on that area and ruin your carpet or your rugs. So the DreamBot Z10 Pro actually ties into your smart home great. So I'm using the Amazon ecosystem, you do have to download the dream skill and then enable that skill in order to locate the device. So let me just give you an example. Alexa, start Lucille Ball. Start cleaning. So it's starting to clean up right now. So the remote control allows you to pretty much steer the vacuum using this little control panel here. So if I tap on the forward button, you can see it goes forward. And then if I tap on the left arrow, I can spin it to the left. If I tap on the right arrow, I can spin it to the right. So the Z10 Pro features four levels of suction power. You have quiet, standard, strong, and turbo. This is what each level sounds like beginning with quiet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the remote control app and spin it. So that's quiet. Now let me switch to standard. So this is what standard sounds like. A little bit louder, but still relatively quiet. Now we'll switch to strong. So this is what strong sounds like. Again, not very loud. So now we'll switch to turbo, which is the strongest of all the suction levels. Finally, this is what turbo sounds like. So now that's, that's kind of loud, but that's gonna give you the best cleaning capabilities of this vacuum. Even though that is the strongest suction level, I don't think the noise level is out of control. I still think that's relatively controlled. And I don't think you'll have a problem with it whatsoever. Now the LiDAR sensor is great at detecting objects and avoiding those objects, but I also want to test out the suction capabilities. So we're gonna do a test on turbo mode. I assigned a zone to this little area and I have some animal crackers here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour out the animal crackers on the ground, just like so, make a mess. And then I have some objects on the ground. Like I have a couple basketballs, I have a gaming remote, I have a charger for my MacBook Pro, some flip-flops and a blanket 
And we're gonna see how well the Z10 Pro can avoid these objects and then of course suck up these animal crackers. For this first test, I think the Z10 Pro did an excellent job at avoiding the objects. The one thing I saw it struggle with was the MacBook charger. It didn't try to go over it or anything like that, but it did keep clipping it with the side brush. Nothing huge, but it was noticeable. I used turbo mode for all of the tests, and I only did a single pass cleanup using the zone mode. I can't believe how well the Z10 Pro did at sucking up those huge pieces of animal crackers. It did need a second pass to finish up the job, but man, it performed fantastic for a single pass cleanup. Now we're gonna do the same test. The items are gonna stay on the floor and we're gonna use some cereal. I'm gonna sprinkle out some cereal here, just like so, make a mess. The reason why I left the items on the ground was to test out consistency. Sometimes robot vacuums from other brands can perform excellent the first job and then slowly get worse after. That's not the case with the Z10 Pro. In fact, it did much better around the MacBook charger. One thing I noticed was the side brush made a bit of a mess with the fruity pebbles and scattered them to areas the vacuum already cleaned. My advice is to pop off the side brush if you're going to be cleaning things like this to avoid making more of a mess. However, in terms of suction power, it once again exceeded my expectations. In the end, I would say a second pass would have finished it up. The reason why I left the items on the ground was to test out consistency. Sometimes robot vacuums from other brands can perform excellent the first job and then slowly get worse after. That's not the case with the Z10 Pro. For this last test, I'm gonna be using some really fine breadcrumbs in order to simulate like dirt or debris that you might bring in from outside. So let me go ahead and sprinkle some on the floor. You can see it's really fine. My wife is going to kill me. Oh my gosh. This last test was a bit tricky. Once again, it did a fantastic job at avoiding objects and barely clipped one of the basketballs and the MacBook charger. From what I can see, it's actually improving with every single cleanup. That said, since these breadcrumbs are extremely fine and my area rug has small gaps in between the threads, it's extremely hard for even stick vacuums with higher suction capabilities to clean. After one pass, I think the Z10 Pro performed excellent. It did require another pass and a half to really seal the deal though. On hard flooring or standard carpet, I feel like this would have cleaned it up on a single pass. Regardless, I am impressed, and I think if you decide to grab one of these, you will be too. The LiDAR sensor isn't just great at detecting objects and avoiding those objects, it's also great at detecting ledges, so if you have a two-story home, this won't drive off a step or drive off a ledge and break itself. Let me give you an example. This is kind of scary. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. Start cleaning. The LiDAR sensor just kicked on. Ooh, gets me every time. Every time I think it's gonna go over the edge. Like I said in the beginning, this is gonna be a two-part series video. This is just the overview, the setup, and just like an initial impressions video. Whereas the second video is gonna be two to three months worth of use in my overall experience. Now I was a huge fan of the L10 Pro, and this takes a lot of the same cues from the L10 Pro and then adds on some extra features. So I'm expecting to absolutely love the Z10 Pro. If you don't wanna miss my second video, make sure to subscribe, click the bell icon, and of course like this video because it helps out the channel. Now in that second video, I'm gonna be going over things like battery life, how often it got stuck, and how well it handles pet hair because my dog does shed a lot. Now for more information on the Dream Z10 Pro, make sure to click the link in the description. And if you wanna purchase one for yourself, there'll be a purchase link down there as well. If you have any questions, just drop them down below in the comment section. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And other than that, I'll see you beautiful people in the next one.